Do you have any tips on preparing for a more investigation-based game? Possibly upping the amount of secrets and clues, maybe reformatting them could help, but any other tips would be appreciated. I'm wired enough around the eight steps from return that if unless an RPG tells me to prep differently, I almost always default to this because most of the, like the, what they call like, the, I, I've now heard it referred to as trad F20. Talk about like nomenclature, which I think is traditional fantasy D20 games. Um, with like D&D or other ones, 13th Age, D&D, Pathfinder, right? I feel like the eight steps can, is, is one model that can work. Different kinds of RPG, there are some RPGs though where they, like you just are intended to prep differently. Dungeon World, you prep differently. Blades in the Dark, you prep differently. And I actually had trouble figuring, figuring out exactly how to mesh my mind around the way that Blades in the Dark runs games. I talked previously on, on, on other videos or other shows about how I'm using the eight steps with a game like Shadow Dark, which is what I would refer to as a traditional fantasy D20 game. But then you get games that call it Cthulhu, you get gumshoe games, you get games that are based around like heavy investigation, your Dresden Files, your Knights Black Agents, games like that, which are really different. And what I, I, I find what you find, I don't think it's necessarily that the eight steps can't work or don't fit the model. But there's definitely a further reinforcement about what the steps are and how much time you spend on certain steps. The big example is like in investigation games, as much as we have a focus on secrets and clues in even a traditional fantasy D20 game, we also need even more secrets for a game that's investigation based. And that's because most of that game is going to be that investigation. And most of the back and forth between players and the GM are the discovery of those clues. And you don't typically have long rounds of combat where a traditional fantasy D20 game, you're going to spend maybe a third to half to maybe even more of your time running the mechanics of combat, which means you don't need that many secrets because they can only discover so much in a three, four hour session, but they could discover a lot more in a Call of Cthulhu game. Now, some of the other elements though, I think still fit. You still want to have a strong start. You still want to know where the game is going to begin and how you're going to draw the players in the game. That makes sense. Almost any RPG where you have a GM and players, you're going to want to have what's that start. Reviewing the characters, maybe, but a lot of times these games are one shots. And, and as I've talked about in other articles and other shows where you don't necessarily need all the eight steps, if you don't know who your characters are, you can't spend time focusing on them. But maybe you can. And if you do, it'd probably still be worth doing. If you're running a Call of Cthulhu game where the characters are consistent between sessions, anytime the characters are consistent between sessions, I think it behooves a GM to spend a little time remembering who the characters are. Because I think in pretty much every R role playing game that has a GM and players, the characters are still the focus of the game because those are actual real players sitting around your table. Everything else is just fake. Scenes, maybe, and I think you could definitely follow the scenes in procedural games and investigation games, where they're going to go, who they're going to investigate. Those usually aren't too open-ended. There are usually key breaks between scenes, and the scenes help you with that. Secrets and clues we've been talking about. Maybe you want to have more secrets. Absolutely. Maybe you want to group those secrets into different groups so that you have certain secrets they discover around different topics. You could definitely do that. If you have 20 secrets instead of 10, you might want to group those up somehow. Locations are still pretty prevalent. You're going to want to have locations. NPCs are pretty prevalent. You're going to want to have NPCs. Monsters, maybe. And in Call of Cthulhu game, there are definitely monsters and maybe you want to have an idea who those monsters are. But maybe you're treating them more like NPCs and less like stat blocks. Treasure, again, it could be items or MacGuffins or things like that. It doesn't necessarily need to be loot. It could be items that matter. And that idea of like the moving MacGuffin, what's the item that is key to understanding the game or moving the game forward that might be moving from place to place. You might want to spend attention on that. The reason why that I've kind of come to those eight steps. And again, this is by talking to lots of GMs, playing lots of games. This is coming from lots of different areas. This isn't just like I sat down in an empty room and came up with the eight steps. I did a lot of study to figure out what the right eight steps were and which ones made the most sense. And it's because the games tend to have those in it. They, they tend to have all of those components in it. And so I think that they still work even when you're running a Call of Cthulhu game. But like you mentioned, you probably want to have more focus on the things that you're going to have to spend more time on in the game, like secrets and clues, like NPCs, maybe your scenes. So this is something when I was reading Robin Laws's book, which I just reviewed on a previous episode, really excellent book. And he talked about the breakdown of mysteries. And one of the things he brought about 
brought up about mysteries is that you're sort of prepping two ev- layers of events. You're prepping whatever events occurred in the past that the characters are going to discover, along with prepping the path that the characters are going to take to find that discovery. And so if you're running a mystery, and a lot of cool Call of Cthulhu games are kind of like mysteries, right? Gumshoe games and percentile under investigative games. A lot of them are kind of mystery based and you kind of want to have a layout and a, a history of what happened in the past. So maybe your scenes are broken up into two groups, past scenes that have already occurred, which then kind of lead to the secrets and clues of what's occurred in the past and present scenes and future scenes. What are the things that are going to happen as the characters are investigating it? So that might take more work. And if you're running mystery games like that, you're going to probably want to spend more time on that kind of stuff because the big difference is giant 45 to hour and 30 minute battles that take place, which burn a lot of time, which means you don't have to have a lot of the other stuff because you're running a lot of fights. So that's definitely something to consider.